Picture a ship so massive it could swallow the Titanic several times over. This isn't just a boat, it's a floating fortress. A 300,000-ton oil tanker that stretches the length of three football fields and rises like a skyscraper laid flat on the sea. Normally, the only way to move a beast like this is with giant diesel engines that burn fuel non-stop, day and night, consuming up to 90 tons in a single day. That's enough fuel to power thousands of cars for the same amount of time. Yet today, China has done the unthinkable. They've fitted such a ship with enormous sails, not made of cloth, but of metal, towering nearly 40 meters high. And against all odds, it actually moves. Now these aren't the romantic white sails you picture from pirate movies or tall ships. They're called airfoil sails, sleek metallic wings that rise out of the deck like futuristic skyscrapers catching the wind. And here's where the impossible starts to make sense. Instead of burning mountains of fuel, these sails let the ocean's oldest free energy source, the wind, shoulder part of the work. It sounds simple, but the effect is staggering. Even a 3% cut in fuel use on a ship this size saves thousands of barrels of oil each year and slashes carbon dioxide emissions by the equivalent of planting a small forest. It forces us to ask a radical question. Are we about to return to the age of sails, but this time with high-tech engineering and billion-dollar tankers? Because if a ship the size of Cayley can sail using wind power, then the way we think about global shipping, fuel, and even climate change could shift forever. But to really understand why this is such a bold experiment, we need to rewind the story back to the very beginning of how humans first conquered the seas. Thousands of years ago, long before engines or steel hulls, the very first boats were nothing more than hollowed out logs or simple rafts. People paddled with oars, relying entirely on human muscle to cross rivers or coastlines. It was exhausting, dangerous, and limited. The breakthrough came when ancient sailors discovered they could capture the wind. By fastening cloth or animal skins to wooden poles, they created the first sails. Suddenly, humans could travel farther and carry heavier loads without rowing endlessly. Wind transformed oceans from barriers into highways, fueling trade, exploration, and even empires. For centuries, the age of sail ruled the seas. From Viking longships to the Grand Spanish Galleons and British Clippers, sails dominated global trade. Wind was free, renewable, and powerful. But it had one weakness unpredictability. A sudden calm could strand ships for weeks, while storms could wreck entire fleets. That's why in the 19th century, the world rushed to embrace a new power, steam engines. Right now, about 50,000 merchant ships sail the oceans every single day, carrying 80 to 90 percent of global trade. That's everything from oil and coal to smartphones and sneakers. But there's a hidden cost. These ships collectively pump out enormous amounts of pollution. The International Maritime Organization estimates that shipping alone contributes about 3% of the world's total carbon dioxide emissions, roughly equal to the entire country of Germany. And if nothing changes, experts warn this number could rise to nearly 17% by 2050 as global trade grows. In other words, ships are not just moving goods, they're quietly heating up the planet. The problem isn't only carbon dioxide. Ships burn heavy fuel oil, a thick, dirty byproduct of petroleum refining, which produces sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides. These pollutants poison marine ecosystems and worsen air quality in coastal cities, increasing risks of asthma and heart disease. Add to this the ever-present danger of oil spills. The 2002 prestige disaster off the coast of Spain dumped 77,000 tons of heavy oil into the ocean suffocating marine life and devastating local fisheries for years. Every major accident reminds the world how fragile our oceans are when shipping goes wrong. This is why governments are pushing hard for change. More than 130 countries have pledged to reach carbon neutrality in the coming decades. And in 2022, the IMO introduced new rules. By 2050, the global shipping industry must cut emissions by at least half compared to 2008 levels. That's a huge challenge for an industry built almost entirely on fossil fuels. LNG-powered ships are one option, but adoption is still low. So, when usual solutions don't scale fast enough, innovators look for alternatives. And that's exactly where China's wind-powered tanker enters the picture, as a bold experiment against a ticking climate clock. In 2015, China launched an ambitious program called the Sail Technology Demonstration Application Development Project. The idea was simple but daring. 
Revive sails, not as fabric, but as giant metal wings designed with aerospace precision. For three years, engineers and shipbuilders worked to master the design and manufacturing of these so-called airfoil sails. By 2018, their efforts produced something that honestly stunned the global shipping industry. The Cayley, a 300,000-ton very large crude carrier, or VLCC, fitted with enormous metal sails rising from its deck like futuristic towers. It was the first vessel of its kind in China, and a signal that the country was serious about rethinking maritime technology. The sails themselves are a spectacle. Each one is 39.6 meters tall, about the height of a 13-story building, and nearly 15 meters wide, with a base diameter of over 5 meters. They dominate the ship's silhouette, transforming what would otherwise look like a standard oil tanker into a hybrid between a cargo vessel and a futuristic aircraft. When fully deployed, these airfoil sails harness wind energy to reduce the load on the tanker's massive engines. For sailors and engineers, the first sight of the Cayley at sea is unforgettable. A giant machine of steel and oil, moving partly on the same natural force that once carried wooden ships across ancient trade routes. But the Cayley isn't just about looks, it's about proving a concept. Could an oil tanker the size of a skyscraper actually use wind power to make a measurable difference in fuel consumption and emissions? That's what this experiment set out to test. And while critics doubted whether sails could add much to such a massive ship, the results would surprise many. To understand why, though, we first need to break down how these unusual sails actually work. At first glance, the sails on the Cayley might look like oversized panels or rigid walls rising out of the ship's deck. But they're not just big boards catching wind like a child's kite. These are carefully engineered airfoils, the same principle that lets airplanes lift thousands of tons into the sky. Instead of pulling the ship backward like a parachute, the curved shape of these sails bends the airflow, creating a forward force called lift. Think of it like, well, an invisible hand pushing the tanker ahead, using nothing more than the wind that's already out there. The real magic is in control. Each sail can rotate, tilt, and adjust its angle automatically, just like a pilot fine-tuning an aircraft's wings during flight. Sensors constantly read wind direction and strength, feeding data into the ship's autopilot system. From there, actuators move the sails into the optimal position, maximizing thrust while minimizing drag. And when conditions change, such as entering a port or facing a storm, the sails can be feathered or even retracted, folding neatly down to avoid becoming a hazard. This makes them far more flexible and reliable than the canvas sails of centuries past. So rather than being a nostalgic step backward, these airfoil sails are a leap forward in applied aerodynamics. They combine the simplicity of harnessing wind with the sophistication of modern control systems. To the untrained eye, the ship seems to glide effortlessly, but in reality, a constant ballet of sensors, software, and hydraulics keeps everything in balance. It's science at work, not magic. And it sets the stage for the most important question of all. Does it actually make a difference in the real world? On paper, the Cayley's airfoil sails deliver about 3% fuel savings. At first, that number may sound underwhelming. 3% is barely noticeable when you're shopping for groceries, right? But scale matters. A ship this size burns between 70 and 90 tons of fuel per day while cruising at around 15 knots. That means even a 3% cut translates to 2 to 3 tons of fuel saved every single day. Imagine saving two entire truckloads of diesel, daily, just by letting the wind lend a hand. Suddenly the number doesn't look so small. Now picture a long voyage from China to Europe, a route that can stretch for 30 days or more. On such a trip, the Cayley sails could save between 60 and 90 tons of fuel in one journey. That's not just money in the operator's pocket. It's also a massive environmental gain. Burning one ton of heavy fuel oil releases roughly 3.1 tons of CO2. Multiply that by the fuel saved, and each voyage prevents nearly 200 to 280 tons of CO2 emissions from entering the atmosphere. To put that in perspective, that's like taking 60 to 90 cars off the road for an entire year just from one ship's sails. Zoom out to an annual scale, and the picture becomes even more striking. With typical operation, the Cayley could prevent close to 3,000 tons of CO2 emissions per year. That's the equivalent of planting about 160,000 trees and letting them grow for a full year. These aren't symbolic numbers. They represent measurable, tangible reductions in both cost and carbon footprint. And this is just one ship. One. The real question is, what happens if an entire fleet makes the switch? 
If one tanker like the Cayley can save thousands of tons of carbon emissions each year, imagine multiplying that across the global fleet. Right now, there are around 50,000 merchant ships sailing the world's oceans every single day. Even if only a fraction of them, say 10%, were equipped with airfoil sails, the combined savings could reach millions of tons of CO2 annually. It's the kind of shift that could move the needle on global climate targets, not just company balance sheets. But it's not only about emissions. Operating costs are a huge deal in shipping, where fuel can account for 40 to 60% of a voyage's total expense. If a ship owner can save just 3 to 5% on that bill, it adds up to millions of dollars over the vessel's lifetime. In an industry famous for razor-thin margins, that's not pocket change. It's a competitive edge. Companies adopting wind assist technology can market themselves as greener, cheaper, and more forward-thinking, making them more attractive to clients who are increasingly pressured to clean up their supply chains. There's also a symbolic weight to this shift. For centuries, wind was the only power driving global trade. By reviving it with modern engineering, shipping demonstrates that old solutions can be reinvented to meet today's problems. A fleet of wind-assisted tankers wouldn't just save money and emissions. It would send a message that even the most stubborn, fuel-hungry industries can adapt. But of course, no idea this bold comes without pushback. And critics have plenty of reasons to doubt. For all the excitement around airfoil sales, critics are quick to point out their limits. The most obvious challenge? The wind doesn't always blow. About 10% of the world's oceans experience extended calm periods, regions known historically as the doldrums. If a 300,000-ton tanker sails into one of these areas, the sails become little more than giant decorations. Unlike the age of sail, when crews could wait weeks for favorable winds, today's shipping industry runs on tight schedules where even a day's delay can mean millions lost. There are also concerns about safety and redundancy. What if the sails malfunction in a storm or block visibility on the bridge? What if relying too heavily on wind reduces the backup power available during emergencies? While the Cayley still carries powerful engines, skeptics argue that introducing sails could complicate operations, especially for crews trained primarily on engine-driven ships. In the worst-case scenario, critics warn, an ill-timed reliance on sails could leave a ship stranded or force detours that increase fuel use instead of cutting it. Then there's the logistical headache. Not all ports are designed to handle vessels with towering sails that stretch nearly 40 meters above deck. Some shipping routes might need adjusting and insurers could raise premiums to cover perceived risks. To many skeptics, these practical issues add up to a simple conclusion. Wind may work in theory, but scaling it across the global fleet could prove more costly and risky than it's worth. Yet it's often these criticisms that push engineers to innovate, and in this case, the solutions are already taking shape. The good news for skeptics is that sails aren't meant to replace engines. They're meant to assist them. Modern shipping is moving toward hybrid solutions, where multiple systems share the workload. On a tanker like the Cayley, the massive diesel engines remain the primary source of propulsion, but the airfoil sails act like an extra boost, shaving off fuel use whenever wind conditions allow. Think of it like a hybrid car that switches between gas and electricity. The engine is always there for reliability, but efficiency improves when the secondary system kicks in. Smart routing is another tool that makes sails more practical. With today's advanced weather prediction and satellite mapping, ships can plan routes that take advantage of favorable winds while avoiding long calm zones. Software on board constantly updates courses to optimize both time and fuel efficiency, a far cry from the guesswork of the old sailing days. Instead of waiting for wind, modern ships actively chase it, balancing delivery deadlines with environmental savings. Finally, design flexibility solves port and storm concerns. The Cayley sails can tilt, retract or feather to reduce drag and avoid damage in extreme conditions. They fold down when entering ports, preventing clearance issues. Combined with crew training and increasing automation, these innovations answer most of the critics' worries. The sales are not about going backward. They're about layering smarter, cleaner systems on top of proven technology. Behind every innovation lies a battle for markets. China is already the world's top shipbuilder, holding more than 45% of global orders in 2025, surpassing Japan and South Korea. If wind-powered vessels become a trend, China's shipyards stand to gain the most. Building or retrofitting large tankers with airfoil sails could add billions in contracts, while also strengthening Beijing's push to dominate green tech exports. 
For Japan and South Korea, both traditional leaders in shipbuilding, this is a warning shot, adapt or lose market share. The economic side is equally important for ship operators. Retrofitting an existing ship with airfoil sails may cost millions, but the savings in fuel over a vessel's lifetime can outweigh that investment. Fuel often makes up 50 to 60% of shipping costs. If a ship can cut even 5% of its bill through sales, that's tens of millions saved over years of voyages. Add carbon taxes and emission penalties being rolled out worldwide, and suddenly greener ships aren't just good PR. They're financial survival. Insurance and ports also come into play. Ships with reduced emission profiles could receive lower insurance premiums or preferred docking slots in green ports. Early adopters gain reputational advantages, luring clients who want cleaner supply chains. The shift isn't just about engineering, it's about money flows and global influence. Shipping doesn't move in a vacuum, it sails under the weight of international law. The International Maritime Organization is steering the industry towards stricter climate goals, including cutting carbon emissions by half compared to 2008 levels by 2050. That's a huge challenge for an industry that still runs almost entirely on fossil fuels. These rules turn sails, hybrids, and other green tech from nice experiments into compliance tools. Ship owners who fail to adapt risk penalties, higher costs, and even being locked out of key trade routes. National governments also play a decisive role. China, for instance, heavily subsidizes its green technology projects from electric vehicles to renewable energy, and it's extending that support to shipping. Ports in Europe and North America are already offering lower docking fees or a faster clearance for vessels that meet green standards. These carrots and sticks combine to create an environment where adopting cleaner tech isn't optional. It's essential for competitiveness. Carbon pricing adds yet another layer. If a ship emits less because of sail assistance, operators can save millions in avoided carbon taxes. This is where regulation becomes a tailwind. Instead of slowing innovation, rules actually make wind-assisted ships more profitable. The first possible future is the niche adoption path. In this scenario, sail-assisted tankers remain specialized, operating mainly on routes with strong, predictable winds like the North Atlantic. Shipping companies use them to showcase environmental responsibility rather than overhaul their fleets. The technology stays limited to a few dozen ships, offering moderate emission cuts, but never reshaping the industry as a whole. This is the proof of concept stage, real but small. The second scenario is mainstream hybridization. Here, airfoil sails become a standard retrofit for many new and existing cargo ships, working alongside engines and LNG or battery systems. Think of it like solar panels on rooftops, not the entire energy solution, but common enough to make a noticeable dent. If thousands of ships added sails, global emissions could shrink by tens of millions of tons annually. Ports would adapt, insurers would price in the benefits, and green shipping corridors would start to appear between Asia, Europe, and the U.S. The boldest future is disruptive mainstream. This would mean a redesign of ships from the ground up. Vessels built to maximize wind power, supported by hydrogen or battery storage, with logistics networks shifting around them. It's ambitious, but if carbon costs soar and tech keeps improving, wind power giants could become the face of 21st century shipping. A 300,000 ton oil tanker gliding under the power of sails feels almost like science fiction. Yet China's Kaylee proves it's real. This experiment forces us to rethink how we move the lifeblood of the global economy, not just with brute engines, but with smarter, cleaner, and more ancient forces like the wind. It's not nostalgia. It's a sign that innovation sometimes means circling back, taking what worked in the past, and upgrading it with modern science. The stakes are massive. If this technology scales, Every percentage of fuel saved equals millions of dollars and thousands of tons of carbon emissions avoided. Multiply that across fleets of tankers, container ships, and bulk carriers, and the impact could rival entire national climate programs. Of course, the challenges remain. Calm seas, costs, and adoption speed. But history shows that disruptive ideas always look fragile at first, until necessity makes them mainstream. So here's the question for you. Would you trust your goods to a wind-driven supertanker? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you want more deep dives into the future of energy and technology, hit subscribe and ring the bell. The oceans may soon be filled with sails again, but this time they'll belong to ships the size of skyscrapers.